I already know what you're gonna say. I made two videos on Mordecai in such a short time, which means that I have to hate him. Wrong. My dear Armada, I come bearing a positive review of one of Mordecai's biggest simp episodes. Let's get into it. <laughs> I have to shout out crummy.bears for their incredible fan art of my character looking outstanding as always. Give them a follow if you have Instagram. Also, big thanks to the early supporters of my new subreddit and a restoration of my amino after a long hiatus. Within no time, these divisions will be a powerful force within the armada. And you can help by joining any of them by going to alphaj.show slash panda and joining the panda armada today. So to start things out, Mordecai and Rigby are watching a movie trailer for a generic zombie movie. Blood, guts, dinner. Blood, guts, dinner, zombie dinner party. That looks awesome. The episode establishes the bond between Mordecai and Rigby early on by having Rigby be the one who has the tickets. This goes against the perception of Rigby being very lazy and financially irresponsible, which proves that even more, he would go out of his way to make his best bud happy. It's a simple premise to start things off. However, Mordecai brings out two tickets for her pajama sisters, apparently a chick flick that he intends to watch with Margaret. I love this notion that Mordecai bought the tickets thinking that he knew what Margaret would want. In hindsight, when we're talking about a girl he seems to know at this point barely, that's kind of weird. It's like asking someone to go on a date with you to a steakhouse and not knowing that they're vegan, but still having the reservations and anticipating a yes. I admire the risk, but this is making you look more like a simp. Speaking of, Rigby echoes the statements of many when it comes to certain streamers and the defenses given to them. They're just gonna sit around talking about their feelings fully clothed. And here is when things start to get interesting. This episode would revolve around this revolutionary action and reaction combo that has defined this character for years. This one act is so engaging to watch that it has become synonymous with the name of the character who has perfected this technique. While there are many early adopters of this technique, sit down and write the notes on the method, only known to us mortals as mordecai -ing. Your food's almost ready. Sorry for the holdup. Oh, hey, Margaret. Um, I was wondering, uh, would you, uh, like to, uh, you know, uh... You're gonna have to excuse Mordecai here. He has a hard time trying to espresso himself. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Rigby. I should make my stance clear on this. I think the act of approaching someone you like is fine. I believe even messing up is something that happens to a lot of people. I even think if you hang out with your friends a lot and you like this girl or you like this guy and you would like to prioritize them for, you know, a Friday and, you know, have a date, go out somewhere, or basically just do something with them, that's also fine. You see, when I say Mordecai, there's a clear distinction. Again, you see, Mordecai and Margaret work well on paper, and I wouldn't have been opposed to seeing them in a steady relationship at the time. The part that makes this mordecai and not those scenarios I just stated, is that Mordecai often throws Rigby and others under the bus to make himself look better, which I explained in the video before. The spin in this episode is that Rigby would have a better time talking to Margaret and show that he is comfortable when talking to women. Now, of course, I would say in defense, Rigby doesn't even know when he looks like an idiot, so of course he's not gonna have that aspect of shame or nervousness in certain situations. Mordecai, however, is not having it. Mordecai offers to help Margaret move houses like the tier 3 simp that he is, and Rigby tags along. It'll be a moving experience for all of us. <laughs> Rigby. Ah, what? Nothing. Wait a minute. You're jealous. What? No, I'm not. Dude, you're just jealous because I made her laugh and all you do is sit like this. Uh, uh, uh. Of course, this begins the tension between Mordecai and Rigby when it comes to Margaret, but there is a clear difference to me when it comes to Rigby's teasing and another show's version of teasing. So a while ago, I talked about in the Casa Grandes that Sergio's teasing didn't come across as a lighthearted, but more of a jerk trying to justify his actions. Here, I don't perceive it to be that way because Rigby appears more to be doing this out of wanting his buddy to become as confident as he can be. In fact, so far, he hasn't hit on Margaret. He's been amicable, but nothing more. Granted, in comparison, this makes Rigby look a lot better to Margaret in the moment than Mordecai, but this is the reason why Mordecai should speak up for himself. Rigby doesn't seem to be doing this for malicious purposes, and if anything, wanted to spend time with his best friend, not even Margaret. Also, there's even times where Rigby isn't even around to interrupt their conversation immediately, and Mordecai still messes up. Um, I've been meaning to ask you, uh... Do you want to, uh, 
have me pick up that box? Oh yeah, thanks. While Rigby would come back into the picture later, he only started speaking to Margaret again after Mordecai picked up the box and left. He's clearly shown that this task is too big for the blue bird. If you want me to be honest, if I ever dedicated a video series just to talk about this relationship in uh, arc form in its own standalone video and not in the rise and fall, there are so many scenes that would make me face palm that my children would have fingerprint markings on their skull. It's a tempting offer. And I have been looking at ways to talk about regular show more often and it's really between that and the Thomas arc I should really throw up a poll about it so I'm asking you guys the Armada which is the better plan you guys know better than me but getting back to the episode Mordecai pulls Rigby aside and blames him for ruining his chances with Margaret I do appreciate that he's speaking about the issues with Rigby and that this isn't a giant bottling up scenario that regular show would go on to do and if you watch this show don't pretend you don't know what I'm talking about you know exactly what I'm talking about where the characters run away off camera instead of talking directly to each other about their issues I dislike that with every five of my being and there's a lot of fiber BAM two tickets to the zombie dinner party premiere want to go with me tonight you actually got tickets yeah I'll totally go with you tonight Mordecai you got to come too. Mordecai can't come cuz I only got two tickets oh maybe next time no no it's cool you guys have a good time. So every time I upload a video to YouTube, they present me with the questionnaire that determines the ad-friendly nature of my content. Every time I've completed that form, my content has come back advertiser-friendly, 100% flex. However, I think now when I upload this video, there might not be ads. I may have to label this video and tell YouTube that there was a murder in this video. Never have I seen such a brutal beating of someone's self-confidence, pride, and chances at a movie day wrapped up into one Chad package. That was very brutal. Brutal, but over here in Armada, we have to push each other to be better. And Rigby did that with tact and care. Even if he gave Mordecai the cheesiest look I've ever seen. Mordecai submits to the Alpha Rigby. All right, you win. I was in my feelings. Call off the date with Margaret and I'll go to the movies with you. And this is where things get a little, what's the word? Let me look through my, my dictionary for a second. Just give me a second. I think I kind of, is it here? All right, Um. let me see, looking through the list. Ah, yes. Timely. As per the law of most cartoons, they exaggerate the situation and blow it up to increase the possibilities to be done with that concept. And this is no different. Rigby shows Mordecai that Pajama Sister is doing terribly, like his attempts with Margaret. And that's his words, not mine. Rigby brags to Muscle Man about his date and how he loves that Margaret isn't going out with Mordecai. His words, not mine. Rigby, lastly, while playing video games with Mordecai, shows that when they go to the movies, Rigby is going to make out with Margaret, which is interesting because he's rarely shown affection for her so far. I'm warning you, man. You better call her and cancel. I can't cancel. That's being rude. I can't be rude to the ladies. Besides, I've got 20 minutes till my date. Hmm, hmm. Are you sure it's only 20 minutes till your date? Huh? It is here where instead of throwing hands, Mordecai throws the clock into the microwave. Now some may call this an overreaction, however I think it's necessary for the episode. You see, Rigby was casually teasing Mordecai until he secured the date with Margaret, which only fueled his arrogance. This has led into Rigby constantly reminding Mordecai about his date, which may seem like teasing but still could definitely cross the line with how frequent it was getting, and how even when Rigby is speaking to other people, or they're doing other activities, Rigby still finds a way to bring it up. It's those actions, while not okay, benefits the episode by showing that Mordecai is at least justified to be very upset with how Rigby is handling the situation. This doesn't make Mordecai look that better, but at least he has a legit reason to be upset beyond his failures. Also, the way this episode bends into the supernatural territory is very natural and it doesn't disrupt the pacing, even though I've probably made this joke multiple times already. <coughs> <clears throat> it's time for that scene. I finally get a chance to ask out Margaret, but you had to butt in and ruin everything. No, I didn't. I just wanted to see zombie dinner party with my bro, who flaked on me for some girl who doesn't even know he exists. I'll kill you! Every time I see this, it gets funnier to me. Here you have a very early version of Mordecai simping and getting mad at everyone but himself, and when Rigby brings up the fair point that Margaret probably wouldn't know Mordecai existed among the many times he stammered and made himself look very silly, his only reaction is to push Rigby back and say that he's gonna kill him, and then react in a way you would if you did not want to kill him. Let's all agree that Mordecai was acting in the heat of the moment for scenario and argument's sake. Doesn't this mean that Mordecai still has emotional problems that he has 
has to deal with himself. While flaws definitely do make the character, and this was a very early episode, this specific problem would come back again and again and again. And in my rise and fall, when I talked about the Rigby's graduation day special, that's the worst example of them all to show Mordecai's behavior and Mordecaiing and that sort of tie in with him being a simp. I believe that to be worse than lift with your back when it comes to that certain situation. As much as I think the dialogue within this episode has been clear, concise, and easy to understand, it proves that later on in those episodes, those had no excuse. While some may hate this episode for making Rigby look too much like a jerk or Mordecai to overreact and show the simp side of him, I think both sides pull each other in an acceptable middle ground, which shows the entertaining story of two bros fighting over a girl that only one of them actually likes. Mordecai takes a journey down to the void to meet up with a certain fantasy figure. I am Father Time, and you're the one who's been running around microwaving all my clocks. I didn't mean to. You didn't mean to. You've wasted my time, your time, and you really wasted the time of that guy you killed. He's dead, and now you get to spend eternity here at the end of time. All because of your petty jealousy. I'm not jealous. Yes, you are. Even when confronted by an all-seeing, time-warping being, he still can't be honest. That behavior is so deep-rooted in his character that he'd end up messing up two perfectly fine relationships. I don't care if he went with Margaret or CJ, or if he had the decency to start or end these relationships in a mature manner. The point is that he doesn't take responsibility in relationships until he's pushed up against the wall. I would say that this led to entertaining episodes. Not many, but there are are some out there, but to be honest, that aspect frustrated me more than it entertained me, because it was just that aspect repeated over and over, with no evolution of the concept or raised stakes or anything like that. Especially in a cartoon where you definitely can do that. Especially in regular show, where they're known for exaggerating and going into the supernatural. This aspect was minimally built on, and no, just because Mordecai switched which person he'd pursue, doesn't mean the action and reactions weren't essentially the same. However, upon seeing his erroneous ways through a flashback, he has remorse, and at least says that he has plans to improve. In hindsight, even this scene is hilarious, because we know now that he's just willing to say anything to get out of the position that he's in. Oh, well, except the phrase, will you go out with me? Did you see how hard Margaret laughed at me? Oh, dude. You're jealous! Admit it! Dude, I'm not! Well... Maybe just a little bit. If only it stayed a little bit, would this series end up a different way? It's Time is a good, dare I even say, great episode, even if it has to do with the frustrating aspect of Mordecai. I didn't see either side as being too much for the story, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Special thanks to the supporters of September. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.